Okay, let's take a look at the credits and see who exactly is working uh, on this movie. So usually the credits will begin with the actors. Uh, and in this movie, uh, it starts with the townspeople. Now there are two ways you can, there are three ways you can list the actors. You can start from the important people and then move on to the less important people. You can go in alphabetical order. So first the people start, whose names start with A, and then B and then C. Or you can do what most movies do and they go in order of appearance, as it says here, in order of appearance. So uh, the first person we see and then the second person and then the third person. Um, so in this case, uh, you have to know the name of the character in order to match the name of the actor. So the first person we see in the movie is the doctor. And so the doctor is played by Michael Higgins. Uh, and let's see if we find more important people. Um, Doug McKenzie, the politician, played by Clark Gregg. Anne, played by Rebecca Pigeon, etc. Uh, so this group of actors is the townspeople. This movie decided to split the actors into two groups, one people in the town, uh, and the other one, the film folk, people related to making the movie. Sometimes when you look at the less important characters, you can find interesting names. So here, uh, there's a character called the fake judge. Uh, that's the name of his character. And then later on, you have the real judge. Uh, so here, are the uh, characters related to the movie making people. And then at the end, you have the stunt coordinator, a uh, person who designed the stunts, and the people who did the stunts. And you'll see there are only two stunt people, one man, one woman. If you think about it, there's only one stunt in the movie, right? The car crash. Uh, and in, in the car only has two characters in it, a guy and a girl. So they only need two stunt people. Uh, so it looks like the way they did this stunt is uh, the stunt people are in the car and then they flip the car uh, and then they cut to a shot of the flipped over car. Um, and like the real actors, the, the actors playing the real characters crawled into the car and then they started the camera and then they crawled back out. So those are the people related to the actors. Uh, then we start looking at the people working behind the camera. So you have the unit production manager. Um, this is the person in charge of managing the production. First assistant director, second assistant director. We talked about these people last week. Then you have the executive in charge of production. Uh, so, and then you have someone called a production executive. Honestly, I'm not quite sure what the difference is between these two people. Uh, it probably has something to do with the structure of their production company. Then you have an executive in charge of post-production. Uh, and you have a post-production supervisor. Uh, so it looks like the, the first person is the the one with the responsibility and the second person is the person who actually manages that part of the filmmaking next you have the art director uh, this is another name for production designer so this is the person who uh, designs the set in the backgrounds in the man-made environments you have an assistant art director art department coordinator art department production assistant storyboard artist as you saw in the movie the storyboard is when uh the filmmakers take the script and they turn them into pictures 
And often these pictures will be exactly the kind of shots that will be taken during the movie. Not always. Sometimes the director or the producer just needs to have an image. So they hire somebody to draw the storyboard. Then you have a set de decorator who is actually the person who uh, decorates the background and gives it, uh, creates that look. You have their assistant. You have a lead man and set dressers. So the set dressers are the people who actually do the work. Uh, and the lead man is the person in charge of these workers. Next, we have an on set dresser. So usually what happens is uh, the. Art director, set designer, they will talk about what the set should look like. And they will prepare the set before they start shooting. But during the shooting process, the set will get damaged. It will have to be repaired. And so you need an on set dresser, someone who uh, takes care of the background while they're making the movie. And then you have production assistants related to the set dressing. So that's the set, the production design. Next, we move into the camera department. You have a camera operator. And it looks like they only have one camera. Um, so when we have a scene in this movie where like two people are talking and you have one shot from here, and then uh, you see the other person talking from a different direction, if they only have one camera, that means that they did that scene at least twice. Uh, first time the camera was in this direction, the second time the camera was in that direction. The reason they only have one camera is to save money. Uh, you can probably tell this movie did not cost too much money to make. Uh, probably did not have a lot of money to spend. And if you do use more than one camera at the same time, it can be complicated. Uh, you have to like, prepare every camera operator so that they know uh, what they're doing. So in this case, it looks like we only have one camera. Uh, so the camera has a first assistant, second assistant, camera leader, a still photographer. Still photography is just regular photos, so like they're taking regular photos. Um, and you need a still photographer for two reasons. One, uh, when you're preparing to make the movie and you want to see what something looks like on camera. The second reason is for publicity, for commercials when you're selling the movie. Uh, OK, and then for some reason they put the sound mixer here as well. A boom operator. The boom is the microphone, right? You guys know the movie making microphone, the big furry thing on a stick and they hold it on top of the actors. That's a boom microphone. So the boom operator is the person who holds that microphone when they're making the movie. And then you have a cable person. A cable is a line for electricity, right? This is a cable. Um, so movie cameras, this was shot in, I think, 1999 or 2000. So big movie cameras were not wireless. They were plugged in. So you had someone who is in charge of making sure that the cable did not uh, get in the way of other people, did not accidentally make its way into the movie. Next, we have uh, production accountants. Accountants are in charge of counting the money and making sure the money is uh, being spent accurately. I'm as a quite deep. Production accountant, first assistant accountant, second assistant accountant. Then you have a production coordinator, assistant coordinator, and production secretary. So these are all administrative people. This is Okay, then we have uh, so this uh, large section on top was related to being on set. Next, we have the second second assistant director. Uh, so this is related to being offset. And then you have two script supervisors. 
in the old days, they used to call this a script girl because usually it was a girl. Um, the job of the script supervisor is to make sure that there are no contradictions when they're making the movie. Uh, people usually do not make a movie in the same order as the movie. Usually people shoot all of the scenes in one location and then they shoot all of the scenes in the next location to save money and save time. Now, because the scenes are shot out of order on different days, sometimes things uh, are not, uh, things are accidentally changed, right? Maybe somebody's hair is different. Maybe uh, uh, an object is put in a different place. So it is the job of the script supervisor to uh, write down and remember what a scene looks like so that the next time or when they shoot the scene right after that scene, everything still looks the same. OK, then we're moving into the workers. Lighting. Chief lighting technician, best boy electrician is the head of the electricians who are responsible for uh, putting up the lighting. Uh, and then electricians. Then you have gaffer. Uh, gaffers are people who who work with the electric lines and the actual power. Then you have the grips. Grips are people who move things. Uh, so the leader is the key grip. The second leader is the best boy grip. You have a dolly grip. A dolly is a kind of camera. Uh, we saw this camera near the end of the movie. It's the kind of camera on train tracks. So a dolly needs somebody to push the camera. That person is the dolly grip. Uh, and then you have rigging grips and like people who who just move things called grips. And then the last person here is the generator operator. Because this movie was shot on location outdoors, they needed a lot of power, so they used the generator. So this person is in charge of the generator. Then you have the property, otherwise known as props. So a property master is in charge of the property. Assistant property master, property assistant. Then you have the editors, first assistant editor, Apprentice editor, so usually uh, for departments that are hard to learn, they might invite students onto the set to learn how the job is actually done. And then you have editorial interns, Gongdusen, or intern, one person. Uh, you might be thinking, OK, but who's the editor, right? We start with the assistant, so who's the editor? That was given to us at the beginning of the film. All of those names at the start are the most important people. These are the people who work below those people. Then we have sound. First person is sound design and supervising sound editors. If you see a name with like a few letters behind it, that means that they're part of a union. Uh, and so that is important information. For jobs like these, it's usually uh, not illegal, but you're not supposed to hire somebody outside of the union. And if the union finds out that you do it, then they might uh, stop you from working with any union members in the future. So that's important if you're working in Hollywood. Then you have a sound effects editor, dialogue editor, Supervising ADR editor. If you remember, ADR is when the actors re record their dialogue after uh, shooting during post production. The Foley editor in charge of like creating the sound effect uh, or editing the, the practical sound effects. First assistant sound editor, assistant ADR editors, re recording mixers, ADR mixers. Then you have the Foley artists who create the practical sound effects. Foley mixer, ADR recordists, they're in charge of helping the actors record their, re record their dialogue. And then you have the studio where they did the ADR, Sound One Corporation. 
Next, we're moving into uh, post production. I don't know the 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 uh, order of these credits is a bit weird to me. Not quite sure why they put post production here. Uh, post production coordinator, assistant, and interns. Construction coordinator. So if they need to build things before making the movie, this is the person in charge of building things. General foreman is the person who manages the workers. Prop makers are the people who create the objects, the props in the movie. Then you have a, a scenic charge. This is the person responsible for the workers who create the scenery. And the people who create that scenery are painters. So like at the beginning and near the end of the movie, we saw a really white fence, right? In real life, that set, that fence, I bet, is not actually that white. They probably got people to paint that fence so white. Uh, and then you have a standby painter in case somebody gets sick, I guess. Carpenters, mu gong, and if they need to build things with wood. Next is the uh, makeup and wardrobe department. Uh, department head makeup. Key makeup artist is the person who leads uh, the most important makeup artist. Key hairstylist, and then uh, a regular hairstylist under that. So like all of the actors in the movie, their hair was designed. It wasn't just like wake up and whatever. Uh, if it looks like the hair was very ordinary, if it looks like the makeup was very ordinary, that is by design. Uh, then you have um, costumes, assistant costume designer. This is about the clothing. Costume supervisor, a set costumer. So again, somebody on set who's in charge of making sure that the costumes look right. Costume production assistant, costume department intern. OK, next location manager, the person in charge of working with the people who live in the place. And his assistant. Uh, next is uh, more administrative people. Production controller is in charge of making sure that the money is properly spent. Uh, production resources, supervising production coordinator. Then you have production attorneys. These are lawyers. Making a movie costs a lot of money. It's very complicated. You want to make sure you follow the law uh, whenever you make a movie. So they had two lawyers on set or as part of the uh, crew. And you have a contract administrator. This person is in charge of uh, the contracts. Uh, then you have an assistant to David Mamet. David Mamet is the writer and director, so he is the most important person on set. So he gets his own assistant. Then you have um, people who work behind the scenes, uh, maybe not on set. So this is a New York production office managers. These are the people working in the production company in New York uh, in charge of this movie. Boston production office manager. These are the people who are in charge of uh, administrative work related to this movie when they're shooting in this place. Uh, OK, so it looks like the executive assistant is David Mamet's personal assistant. Because uh, here you have key on set, sorry, on set assistant to David Mamet. So when he's on set, he gets a, another assistant to help him. Uh, on set assistant to Sarah Green. I think Sarah Green is a producer. Uh, unit production manager, I remember, yes. So like the most important people get an assistant. Uh, then you have a key on set production assistant, set production assistant coordinator, set production assistants. So just lots of people doing administrative work, running around, uh, getting things done. Then you have a cast production assistant, a film runner. This is fun. This was shot on film, not digital. So every time they had they yelled cut, uh, they had to make sure there's enough film left in the camera. Uh, and when they're finished with the film, they have to run it to um, a film. I can't remember the English word, but it's the company that turns the film into 
呃、uh, ，images that you can see on screen， 就洗底片的那个公司。呃、uh, ，so the film runner is in charge of getting the film to that company. Um, development, yes. In English, it's called development. Uh, to get the film to the film development company. Then you have more administrative people, right? Production office assistants, office interns. Then you have extras and local casting. So these two people are in charge of finding local people to be extras. Paul Long Tao, the Ling Yan. Then you have a special effects coordinator, special effects. Remember, the special effects are done in camera physically on the set. Uh, and then you have additional special effects. I think what this means is that some parts of the movie uh, were created during post-production. When they realized that something was missing, they had to add another scene, they had to add another shot. And some of those shots had special effects. But they couldn't get the original person in charge of special effects. Uh, maybe because he was busy or he had another project or whatever. So they had to hire somebody else to do additional special effects. Next, you have animals. Animals provided by this company, and this trainer is in charge of handling the animals. Uh, in movies today, we don't call this person a trainer, we call them a handler because they're not supposed to. Their job is not just to train the animals, it's to control the animals. And then, of course, you have a production assistant to help with that. Okay, next we have a unit publicist. This person is in charge of handling media and news related to the film. Sometimes, especially when you make a film on location, local people will be interested. Some people will want to do a news story on the production. So the unit publicist is in charge of handling the press and the media. You have set medics. These are the doctors on set. Catering is food uh, by this company. Craft service is the person in charge of actually creating and delivering the food. They have an assistant. They have a production assistant. Then you have a transportation coordinator in charge of moving people, driving people around. Uh, and you have a transportation captain. This is usually we call this the lead driver or the head driver. And then below you have all of the other drivers. So if they need to move people or things from one place to another, these are the people who drive those people and things around. Next, we have the music, music executive, music business affairs, music clearance executive. Clearance means getting the rights to use the music. Uh, if somebody owns the right to music, you can't just put it in a movie if your movie is trying to make money. You have to buy the rights, uh, and that is that process is called clearance. Uh, music contractor, music editor, and if there's original music, you have music conducted and orchestrated by, so this is the composer. Uh, scoring mixer, the person who mixes the background music. Music recorded at this studio, right track recording is a music studio. Music preparation, studio assistants, and musicians. So if you have original music, you need to hire people to make the music and they give the name and the musical instrument. Uh, then you have the songs that are used, the actual music used in the movie. Um, so these two songs have the same name, very interesting. It looks like the. Hmm, usually we would only have one credit. It's the same song, right? It says words by David Mamet, music by Theodore Shapiro, sung by Patti Lupone. Usually these three lines would be in the same credit. I think they separated it because Patti Lupone is very famous and they wanted you to notice that she sang the song. 
So that's the one uh, major song in the movie. But in addition to the score, usually they will work with a uh, music production company to put out an album, Inre Zhuanji. So this is tells you that like, you can buy this album at this place. Then you have the main and end title design. So this person designed the opening titles and the closing titles, which we're looking at now. Then you have post-production. So I'm not quite sure why they put the post-production uh, executives so high up. Opticals. So this is, I think this is referring to visual effects, effects done in post-production. Negative cutter. Uh, negative in Chinese is fu pian. So this is the person in charge of like uh, cutting and organizing the negative. Color timer, who does the person who does the color. Technical consultant, somebody who helps. Digital cinematography. Oh, so they did use digital. So why are if they did use digital, why are they doing things with film? Huh. Very interesting. Um, and then you have the companies who provided the equipment, right? Grip electric equipment furnished by. Furnished just means provided. Uh, I think I mentioned this last time, but when they make a movie to save money, usually they don't buy everything. They rent most of the equipment. So these are the companies that they rent from. Uh, and then editing equipment, post-production and sound facilities. Rights clearances. So this is the person in charge of not. Uh, sometimes in a movie, you'll use things that have copyright uh, in addition to music. So maybe you use like a piece of art. Maybe uh, your story quotes from other works. Uh, anything that has copyright, you need somebody to make sure that you have the rights in order to put it in your movie. Uh, then you have risk management, which to me sounds like the insurance. Uh, liaison, the person who works with the insurance company. Uh, or it could be the person on set who goes, don't do that, it's dangerous. Don't do this, it's dangerous. I don't know. Next, you have uh, production safety. This is the person who makes sure that everything you do is safe and won't hurt other people. Insurance, this is the insurance company. Payroll, this is the person who makes sure that everybody working on the movie gets paid, or the company. Prints, this is the film development company who creates the actual film that you can play on a projector. Color, this is the company who does the color of the film. Uh, and then this is a joke, wallpaper. If you remember, um, the mayor's wife was really pissed about not having any wallpaper, bihua, or bizu. Uh, so as a joke, they put in the credit for the wallpaper. So those are the main credits. And below here, you have uh, the major company logos. MPAA, this is the American Film License. In order to make a movie, you have to get the permission of the Motion Picture Association of America, MPAA. Uh, not make a movie, to release a movie, to show the movie in public. Dolby Digital, these are the people who do the sound. Fujifilm, this company provides the film uh, for the images. And then this is the AFL-CIO. I know you can't see that. Uh, it's the main union of the crew members. The I can't remember what it stands for, but it's the biggest union in American filmmaking. Uh, then we have another joke. It says only two animals were harmed during the filming of this motion picture. Usually it says no animals were harmed. If animals were harmed, usually they just delete that line and they don't tell you. So this is a joke. Uh, so after the main credits, then you have the acknowledgments. First, you start with the locations, or you can start with the locations and end with the people, or you can start with people and end with locations. Depends on you. 
Um, so the filmmakers wish to extend their personal thanks to the following for their contribution to the making of this movie. The people of Manchester by the Sea, Massachusetts. So they made this movie in a place called Manchester by the Sea in the state of Massachusetts and Mazel, which is in, also in the northeast. Uh, so the movie says it's in Vermont, Weimont, uh, it's very close. Then you have all of these companies that helped out. The Boston Camera Rental Company. Usually if the company is here and not higher up, that means that these companies were not paid. They agreed to help in exchange for maybe some advertising. Boston Camera Rental Cartier. Uh, Cartier is the diamond company. The hotel, I guess this is where they stayed. Uh, the Massachusetts Film Office, Kodak, which is response, which is another film company uh, like Fujifilm. A leather company and then uh, individual people and Prada. For some reason, Prada is stuck down here. Then you have the standard legal disclaimer telling you that this is not a real story. Don't treat it as a real story. The characters and incidents portrayed and the names herein are fictitious and any similarity to the name, character or history of any person is entirely coincidental and unintentional. Then you have a legal disclaimer that there is a copyright on this movie and you should not show this movie without spending money. Uh, usually I break the law, but in this case I actually bought this movie. Because I couldn't find it free online. Anyway, uh, this motion picture, photo play. A photo play is, I guess, the legal name for a movie because there's a script, so it's a play. But it's photographed, so it's a photo play. It is protected pursuant to the provisions of the laws of the United States of America and other countries. Any unauthorized duplication and or distribution of this photo play may result in civil liability and criminal prosecution. So uh, don't show this movie illegally. And then uh, the, the next paragraph is this specific legal license. This motion picture is being exhibited under specific license and it's not for sale. New Line Production Inc. Uh, this is the production company. Is the author of this motion picture for the purpose of copyright and other laws. And then you have the actual disclaimer about animals being harmed, right? It says actually. American Humane Association was on set to monitor the animal action and to ensure that the guidelines for the protection of all animals in uh, filmed media were followed. No animal was harmed in the making of this film. And this job is usually done by the American Humane Association. Sometimes you will see, instead of it says no animals were harmed in the making of this film, sometimes it will just say no animals were harmed. I'm not sure if there's a legal difference. And then you have the copyright. This is actually very important. There's a famous story about the zombie movie Night of the Living Dead. Uh, and it's the most famous zombie movie, but the filmmaker forgot to add a copyright. So when the film was released, people could immediately record it and sell it and and didn't have to pay the filmmakers money. So even though it's one of the most famous uh, films in the world, it actually lost money. So the copyright is very important. And then finally, we have one last joke. A complete list of this film's associate producers, Fu Zipian, is available upon written request. If you remember the in the movie, the joke is if a, an assistant producer credit is what you give someone when you don't want to pay them. Uh, and so the joke, I guess, is that in making this movie, they have so many assistant producers that they it's too long to put in the credits. OK, that's it. Um, so that's a quick walk through uh, a film's end credits. So now you know uh, why the end credits exist and like what um, is actually in those end credits. And it's basically anybody who did anything as part of the movie will be put in the end credits. 
those credits were actually quite short. If you go watch a Marvel movie and you you're waiting for that bonus scene, right? So many names appear on, on the screen because a lot of them are digital animators. They have to create the images using CGI. Uh, and so like the usually the end credits are uh, the one way to make sure that the people who should be paid are paid. Uh, and the end credits are also good for if you're looking for people to help you make a movie, you can look at the names in the end credits and try to contact those people or those companies. Uh, and sometimes, like in this movie, you can hide a joke or two in the end credits. Okay, do you have questions about that? Great. Next week, so this was pre-production, right? The movie ends right after they begin shooting the actual movie. Next week, we're watching a French film about production. It starts when they start the camera. Um, but many things will feel very familiar with uh, the film this week because this film was actually uh, inspired by next week's film. Uh, but we'll get more details about how they actually like shoot the film and how they do production. Uh, let's see, next week, uh, what, again, what, the movie will start as soon as the bell rings, uh, after the movie ends, there will be a 10 minute break. And in the third period, I will introduce documentaries because the week after that, we will be watching a documentary. Okay, see you next week. <laughs>